Hey guys, John and Matt here, founders of Story Prism. Story Prism is a suite of AI powered writing tools that helps writers go from an idea to a finished story quickly. We are here doing a video on our story foundation tool. Last time we went through a character builder and um, mashed up Goofy with the Unabomber and kind of created the uh, the horrible child of, of, the, of those two mashups. It was really fun. And so now we're going to go through and create um, the foundation for a story from scratch. And we're going to be using very famous character Ernest P. Worrell as as our as our foundation. If you guys aren't familiar with the Ernest movies from the 90s, Ernest P. Worrell is a, is a classic slapstick character played by Jim Varney, developed around the 80s, and uh, they made about 11 movies throughout the 90s. It's a classic movie from our childhood that we really love and adore. So we're going to be uh, honoring Jim Varney Barney's legacy by creating the foundations for a brand new Ernest movie. The story foundation allows you to create two end deliverables that are pretty important for writers, and that is a logline and a central message. A logline is just a one sentence description that really paints the dramatic narrative for your piece. And while this isn't something that you know, you would necessarily deliver to a producer or director or anything like that. Um, it is a wonderful exercise as a starting point for your story because it can really help you kind of get the key points for your first and second act um, in a way that really hooks the reader into wanting to see more of it. So it can really kind of help you conceptualize the basic building blocks for your story. And Story Prism's AI uses um, the log line and the central message and everything that you've created in the very first tool throughout the process of, of developing your story. So it's very important to spend a lot of time in the foundation, really thinking about who your character is, their journey, and getting that right, because that's going to be the, the basis and the foundation for how the AI learns about your story. And it all starts here with the very first box, describe your main character. Now. We've, we found that it, the, the AI really loves two things in this, and that is who the character is before the opportunity comes into their lives and what the situation is. Those are the two key points of information that need to be in this in order for the AI to work appropriately. Right, and when we're talking about opportunity and new situation, uh, this is in reference to a specific plot point for a three act structure. So if you think about it, in the beginning of the story, in the first act, you have your character uh, living their day in day out and they're living life in a way that makes them flawed and they cannot understand the fallacies of their way of living. And so the opportunity in a story is the moment in which the character receives an opportunity to go on an adventure or rather, you know, go on some journey to achieve a goal. And it's through that journey that allows them to change. So that's what we mean by opportunity and new situation, which when combined, of course, is your inciting incident, which is a major plot point for stories. Yeah, so let's go ahead and start describing. So Ernest works as a groundskeeper at a college. Um, he's what did you say? Well, let's yeah, describe Ernest. He's dim-witted. Yeah, he's certainly dim-witted. Dim-witted, uh, naive. Uh, thinks he's better than he is. Than he is. Uh, know it all. Uh, well, that's the same. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, has a has a big heart, and uh, and, and is well liked by the staff. By the staff. So let's go ahead and add uh, often screws. Yeah, you know, often you know screws. Oh, he's clumsy. Let's just say that yeah, yeah, he's okay. uh, he's clumsy, uh, but has a big heart and is well liked by his staff. So yeah. really, what this is this, this description is like who he is um, in his day in day out. Who he is at the very beginning of the story. Like right, he works as a groundskeeper at a college. That's a key piece of information. He's he's who he is. He's dimwitted. He's naive. He's he's well liked. He's got a big heart, but he's clumsy. That's really describing, you know, the character very much at the beginning of the story and really throughout for an Ernest movie. So now we're going to talk about the situation. And that's really the moment that propels him on his journey. So the situation is uh, a new dean um, is uh, arrives on campus. 
uh, with a lot to prove. With a lot to prove, that's good. Um, he's, uh, he makes a new requirement. He makes a new requirement that all staff, including Ernest, has to have, must have a college degree. Must have a college degree. <laughs> okay. Obviously, yeah. he doesn't have a college degree, so that's going to be interesting. So that's really our basis. Now, the AI doesn't come up with this. This is something you need to come up with yourself. But now that you have this, you can use the AI. So let's go ahead and generate an answer for the rest of the prompts. Ernest must decide if he's going to leave his friends, his job, and go back to school. That's interesting, but I don't know. That's not quite what we're looking for. But, you know, that's interesting because you can almost see this being turned from like a quirky Billy Madison comedy to like a heavy drama where it's yeah. like, the time is ticking, he's got 90 days yeah. to leave or whatever, and he doesn't know what to do. Right. And maybe this movie is what happens in that span of yeah. 90 days where, yeah. you know, he has to, uh, you know, figure out his life. So it could be like a sort of coming of age with Ernest. Yeah, I like this. Okay, Ernest must navigate the halls of the university, navigate the pollocks of academia, navigate the halls of his own dorm room to secure his degree in three weeks. That's interesting. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> very interesting. And it's very similar to kind of what we were naturally thinking just based off of the description, yeah. right? I mean, it's very obvious that his primary mission is to get a college degree to secure his job. So right. something that can get in that ballpark range is that that's really good. All right. I like that. So let's go, let's keep this. Yeah. And then uh, let's generate the next one. So who are they up against? That's pretty obvious. He's up against the dean and his cronies. The dean who wants to prove he's tough. Sure. Great. Perfect. That's, that's exactly what it is. And what's at stake? Really his job. Ernest soul. <laughs> I like that. Ernest soul. It could be. I mean, you know, he <laughs> could be tested. But yeah, I mean, I would say. Uh, Let's not go that deep. Let's his say his career. job. No, his I would job, say his career. His career. Well, his well, job, yeah, job that he loves. Yeah, his yeah. job that he loves, yeah. I think, is is good because he, he does. He loves it. Yeah, I mean, he can always he get a job at Walmart. If he right. Wants. Yeah. That would be a good one. All right. So the, Ernest, yeah, Ernest, Ernest goes to Walmart. Goes to Walmart. <laughs> a dim-witted groundskeeper at a college gets a three-week deadline from the new dean to get his degree. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually good. good. Like that. yeah. it, it, you know, and one thing we noticed too with this log line generator is that it doesn't necessarily like fill the whole thing out, but it gives you that great starting point, and then you could just finish it. You yeah. Know, right. Yeah. So let, let, let's go ahead and finish this. Um, a dim-witted groundskeeper at a college gets a three-week deadline from the new dean to get his degree, otherwise he will lose his job. Now we're gonna go into uh, designing uh, the central message for this. For those who are unfamiliar with the central message, this is a one sentence statement, just like a log line, only instead of painting the dramatic narrative, this is painting the, the why of your story, mm. right? This is the reason for why your story exists. It's the central message in which all of your action, dialogue and choices that you make all center around this particular kind of conversation that you want to have. Yeah. An arguable conversation. A premise might be like uh, blind ambition leads to ruin. Sometimes you have to give up the ones you love most. Mm -hmm. These are things that can be argued. They are not absolute. So saying something like it's bad to kill people. Duh. Nobody can really argue against that. Right. So that's a bad premise. So what this does is it helps you design that arguable a uh, statement which you can basically use as your north star mm -hmm. uh, for deciding all of those meticulous choices that need to be made. So when you're designing a central message, typically what you would do is you would come up with a belief, a moral belief, an outlook that your protagonist has about the world, which is flawed. This is a belief that exists in the beginning of the story and it's something that the protagonist embodies, right? And then what you do is you want to really figure out what the antagonist believes about the world, which is typically the opposite of what the protagonist believes. And then to design your central message, you synthesize these two beliefs into a, a higher belief, right? Mm. And the reason why you do that is because stories are about growth in characters, right? So you want, <laughs> your main character ideally to grow, or at least your audience to understand how they need to grow, right? And you know, a good story also has an antagonist that grows alongside. Mm -hmm. And so this can really sort of help you shape a blueprint design for how those characters change, because now you're seeing what the character is like at the beginning, 
and then what they ultimately learn uh, through their interactions and clashing with the antagonist and their beliefs about the world. Yeah. And that's exactly what this is. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and see what the AI can come up with. All right, so we got our first one here. Uh, the AI came up with, he believes that people are perfect the way they are. This is this is pretty good. And that really kind of embodies Ernest, right? The, the character. And the, if you think of him as, you know, the full archetype, you know, he's the guy who will just go and do something without thinking about it. And he'll just, you know, completely act blindly. And um, that's what makes him enduring and he'll get in all kinds of trouble. And that's really where the humor comes in. And then the, the antagonist needs to be the opposite of that. So yeah, let's go ahead and see what the AI can come up with. All right, so this is pretty good. I like this. People aren't perfect the way they are. And if you imagine the Dean as being this like authoritarian type who comes into the campus and pushes people really hard to kind of be be better and almost like turn Tony Perkins and heavyweights, you know, like that, that, you know, Ben Stiller's character kind of coming in and just like, he, he thinks he's doing right by pushing everyone, but he's, what he's really doing is like, you know, bad driving them insane. Driving them insane. <laughs> he's so like almost killing right, the kids. Exactly. So I could, I could see this character being somewhat like that. And I, I think this is really good. Um, okay, so let's, so let's, see, yeah, let's see the synthesis of this. Let's see the, the, the higher message. Looks like we came up actually with a really great one. So this says people are perfect the way they are, but they can always become better. That's great because what you're seeing is a synthesis between the uh, two opposing beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing Ernest competing with the Dean, right? Ernest believes that people are perfect the way they are. He doesn't recognize the flaws of himself and others. And then the antagonist believes that people are imperfect the way they are and they have to be pushed to be better, right? And so by the end of it, whether Ernest or the Dean, uh, or if it's just the audience that learns this, the lesson that comes after this clashing and the resolution is that people are perfect the way they are, but they can always become better. Really what this is saying is that people don't necessarily have to go out and do great things to be great people. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just exist, you can just have a job and be a loving, kind person, and that is fine. But having said that, we can always do better and be better people. This has been awesome. We, uh, we've we come up with a completely brand new idea for an Ernest movie uh, from scratch, which is which is really cool. Yeah, and we did that in literally under an hour. Um, I Typically for me, I don't know about you guys, but typically for me, uh, this could take at least a good couple hours, two, three hours, uh, and a huge mental strain too, uh, because it's very hard to conceptualize this from scratch. So. That's why like we're building Story Prism. We just want to make it more manageable for you to do the things that are necessary, uh, but the things that aren't really the most compelling things when writing. Like we all want to get to the script and write. And some of us want to go beyond the script and actually produce the film. So that's why we're doing this. Maybe next time we'll uh, explore Ernest a bit more in depth and kind of get his thoughts on uh, the Dean and the situation he's in. Yeah. So until next time, guys, cool. Keep writing. See you guys. See ya.